Hello everybody, I'm Ahmad Rashad, and this is Real TV. Hands off that remote. We got you covered for the next 30 minutes. That's it. Yeah, this guy's getting ready to rob me. That guy's an escaped con, and he's got more than robbery on his mind. It's the bull fight with a twist. Bull and Matador end up in the stands. Looks like he's getting it up. Not a chance. This chase is headed the wrong way on the freeway. Plus, it's a rough ride up, but that's nothing compared to the ride down. And here's mud in your eye. We always deliver the world's best shots. We're Real TV with Ahmad Rashad. Welcome to the show. The man in our first story faces a big challenge, getting to the top of a steep hill. But actually, that turns out to be the least of his troubles. The Jackson Hole Championship Hill Climb. Winter Warriors see who can make it the farthest up this killer hill. Paul Nadu is on his way, but that's not going to last long. Amazingly, Paul reaches the top of the hill. He turns his snowmobile to stop, but miscalculates and starts back down. Paul shoots down the mountain. The announcer has some helpful words of advice. Take a look at this third angle. The snowmobile is literally chasing Paul down the mountain. It flies through the air like a toy, but it's actually several hundred pounds of bone-crushing metal and spikes. Thankfully, other than some bruises, Paul is okay. But it takes four guys to rescue the snowmobile. Call 911. Call 911. Call 911. Call 911. Before you started, I said, yeah, this guy's getting ready to rob me. Store clerk Walter Whitaker is right on the money. This man's no customer. He's an escaped convict on a violent crime spree. And he's about to strike again. Walter tells the thug to take the money, but this crazed robber has murder on his mind. He pulls out a knife. He doesn't know Walter's got one, too, hidden behind his back. Don't do it. Don't trust me. You better get back. The convict moves in for the kill. Walter fights for his life. See, I was tangled up in that wire. That's why I hit my head right up in there. Anyone something? Lucky for Walter, a brave co-worker runs out from the back room and hits the police call button. Walter was trying to protect her. I figured like this, if he was bold enough to attack me with a knife for it, he really hurt her. The con finally strolls away, leaving Walter bleeding and moaning for help. The courageous clerk survives the attack, and he's got the scars to prove it. You see right here where that knuckle is? He sliced all that, all that's gone. Two days later, this vicious convict's crime spree ends when he's shot twice by police after a wild car chase. He's now behind bars again, with an Another 40 years tacked onto his sentence. Where else are you going to see stuff like this? This is the home of the world's best. Caught on tape. He's the most amazing athlete in the ring. A performer of such ability, you could truly call him the Michael Jordan of Bulls. Most days, the fans in Calasparra, Spain, are screaming for the bull to bite the dust. Today, they're screaming for their lives. A few of the boulder spectators try to challenge the bull with no luck. The world is completely turned upside down when a matador brings the fight into the stands. Everyone else is fleeing their seats, but he is forced to take one. Having made his point, and with little else to prove, the bull is ready to exit in grand style. Everyone jumps back over the fence from the safety of the ring, and the fight continues as if nothing ever happened. 
But you can bet some of these fans will be glad to watch their next bullfight, just like you're watching this one on TV. No sabemos. Calling all cars. Turn on your dashboard cameras. It's great police video up next here on Real TV. 111, what's your 20? In Montgomery, Alabama, a robbery suspect is on the run. On his tail is Deputy Charlie Grimes. And up ahead is a spike strip, courtesy of the state police. The spikes shred three of his tires. The suspect pulls toward the median. Looks like he's giving it up. But he's not giving up. When he crossed the median, I had visions of a head-on collision with fatalities. The man charges into oncoming traffic, daring the deputies to follow. Deputy Grimes has to decide between playing it safe and going after the suspect. I'm going to cross over. Another unit records the action as Grimes swings into opposing lanes. Head-on collisions are a constant danger. But Deputy Grimes stays with the suspect until he bails into the woods. Minutes later, the deputies return with their men. The suspect's convicted of armed robbery and reckless endangerment. He gets a jail term for his crimes, and Deputy Grimes gets a story that's almost too wild to believe. I knew that sooner or later, he would have either killed himself or he would have killed one of us. You're watching Real TV. The young man on our next tape is just out to have a little fun, but when he tries to take things to the next level, he ends up making some great Real TV. <laughs> There's only so many ways to keep yourself amused at the water pit behind the skate shop in Nags Head, North Carolina. The idea is to drive all the way through the pit on a motorcycle. And as young Cooper Barnes demonstrates, it's a lot tougher than it looks. It's a stunt in need of a technological fix. In this case, a piece of old plywood propped up with cinder blocks. The crowd holds their breath. Let's look at that again. Now, let's back it up for a little analysis. The ramp has a springboard effect, forcing the handlebars down. It looks like Cooper is headed for a face plant in the mud at the bottom of the pit. But at the last moment, he throws an arm out, saving himself a lot of embarrassment and a possible drowning. Robbie Knievel, he ain't, but not bad for a water pit behind the skate shop in Nags Head, North Carolina. Well, it seems to me there's really not much to do in Nags Head, North Carolina. Coming up, a race car goes up in flames. The driver disappears in the flames for more than a minute. Plus, if you're going to stage dive, make sure the audience is ready. Still the first and still the best. You're watching Real TV. Re -re Repeat after me. This is the home of the world's best. On tape. Welcome back. In everyone's life, there are some little bumps and bruises. But for the folks in our next clips, the bumps aren't so little, and the bruises are really going to hurt. Otar is a famous Russian music show host. He's on a whirlwind tour in Estonia with some of Russia's hottest bands. The announcer tells the crowd to get ready, because Otar's going to jump. The only problem is, they don't understand Russian. He's out like a light. The crowd helps him back on stage, where he gets dragged off with a concussion and several broken ribs. More spills. In Southern California, the judges are about to award the Stars Thunder Cheerleading Squad second place at a local competition. Here's a little basket toss before they get their medal. It starts out great, but the little girl gets tossed up and out. Her teammates miss the catch, and she smacks the floor. 
Luckily, she lands on a rubber mat, and they all walk away winners. In North Carolina, former beauty queen Mindy Settles gets ready for a harness race at the county fair. It's a slow and steady pace at first, but here she comes, leading the pack down the backstretch. It's a frightening turn of events. The horse stumbles and tumbles head over hooves. Mindy gets tossed to the track. Both lie motionless in the dirt. Luckily, Mindy suffers only minor injuries to her arm and leg. The horse is just fine. Here's a little interesting twist. It turns out the horse in that last story was also pregnant. Not only was the little one fine, the owners named it Mindy after the rider in that nasty spill. Record, playback, watch. The three-step program to Real TV. The need for speed is a national obsession for Australians. And Aussie race car driver Linton Connor is no exception. On this day, he tears up the Australian speedway. Then suddenly, his car gets slammed and bursts into flames. The intense heat keeps rescue crews at bay. Even fire extinguishers are no match for the flames. Linton's trapped by his seatbelt and slowly burning to death. A truck is brought in to pull the car out of the flames. But all chaos breaks loose when a second truck pushes the race car from behind, trapping a rescue worker underneath the burning car. Linton's been trapped for over a minute. Then the situation gets even worse. A fuel tank erupts. into the burning race car. He pulls and pulls, trying to free the driver from his seatbelt. He succeeds. Linton Connor is out, and miraculously, he's still alive. 90% of his body is badly burned, but the ordeal is finally over. After a series of excruciating skin grafts, Linton's okay. But he says he'll never race again. Straight ahead, a day of training turns to horror as propane gas ignites on top of firefighters. Plus, here, kitty kitty, the family pet goes in a drink. We'll be taking attendance after the break, so don't go away. Don't go away. Expect an eyeful. This is Real TV. Welcome back. Everybody knows that football is a rough sport, except my daughter who thinks it's a silly sport. But on our next tape, the most brutal confrontation of the game doesn't happen on the field. It happens in the stands. It's Sunday night in San Diego, and the Raiders have just beaten the Chargers. The game's over, but the battle in the bleachers has just begun. It may look like a simple scuffle, but watch again. The Raiders fan has a knife. Suddenly, this uppercut becomes a stabbing. Chargers fan Dan Napier is rushed to the hospital with knife wounds to the face and body. I stabbed in the uh, lower lip here, in between the eyes, and on my left side. The cut was deep. Dan's injuries aren't serious, and now the courts will have to review this instant replay. More great shots are queued up and ready to roll. You're watching Real TV. It's a training exercise where the danger is all too real. Again, as Florida firemen advance on a burning propane tank. The plan is to fight through the flames, reach in, and turn off the gas valve. Mike Kusak is on the front line when the plan goes wrong. 
airplanes were coming at us, we went into a fog pattern, which is a large uh, uh, water stream, and it pushes the flame over the tank, but as we got close to the tank, the gas was going through the fog and ignited behind me. Two firefighters in the middle of the line feel they need first and pull away. When they went to run from the line, they grabbed the hose and they pulled it as they went. And by doing that, it stood me up and pulled the hose away from the flame. Now the flame ignited again and it caught all of us. Five firefighters are hospitalized for hot gases in their lungs. Mike is treated for second degree burns. But believe it or not, his day still isn't over. We went back that same day and completed the training that day with a large pit fire. When the day's finally over, all have a new respect for propane. Just be careful, because it, it doesn't take very much to ignite it. Once it does, it's too late. Caught on tape. Caught on tape. Caught on tape. Caught on tape. Think about being a cop in Atlanta? Oh, are you? Yes. Telling the cop who's pulled you over that you want to join the ranks of law enforcement seems like a smart move. I'm going to get this and we're going to give you a warrant. Hang tight, okay? That line seems to work on Deputy Keith Fitzgerald, but you can't fool this suspicious cop from Morgan County, Georgia. If I'm saying you want to be a police officer, not, I respect that. I just want to make sure that everything's legit. If you have a problem, I just take quick search of your vehicle. That's okay. Now the deputy's got his permission to search the car, but he jokes to keep these suspects off guard. Do you have any hand grenades, rocket launchers? No, any, man. Any weapons on you? <laughs> Deputy Fitzgerald has the last laugh. Pardon, you can't be a police officer in Atlanta hauling dope around. The cop hauls out marijuana with a street value of more than $40,000. It seems there are two dopes now, and neither of them is laughing. Stick around. There's more great tape coming up in a flash. Tell a friend you're watching Real TV. The couple in our next story find themselves out at sea and in deep trouble. But they're not the only ones that need to be saved. A catamaran cruise to the Bahamas comes to a perilous end. The Blue Heron takes on water fast in eight-foot seas off the Florida coast. One brave Coast Guard officer is already on board with a pump, but water is pouring in too fast through a broken hatch. Now they must save the crew of three, William and Lori Link, and their beloved cat, Sasha. Sasha is heated over first, but she spots her owner still on the Blue Heron and makes a desperate leap. Without a thought for his own safety, William jumps in. He grabs Sasha and finally manages to hand the terrified cat to his wife. With everyone back on the Blue Heron and the ocean getting even rougher, the Coast Guard throws a rescue line. Finally, William, Laurie, and Sasha are all aboard the Coast Guard cutter and the crippled catamaran is taken in tow. On this day, two cats are saved. William pulls his beloved Sasha from the ocean, and the catamaran, Blue Heron, is salvaged. That's all the time we have for today, but we're going to leave you where we began the show, at the Jackson Hole Hill Climb, with some snowmobile wipeouts. So long, everybody. What's up? This is Paradox from Denver, Colorado. You are watching the Real TV Marathon here on TNN. I'm watching Real TV right now because it's the realest TV there is on TV. So stay tuned.